Good morning everybody, Dr. Tyler Foster here. I am a board certified anesthesiologist. Today I want to talk about arterial blood gases. Uh, a fairly complex subject, uh, vitally important in the healthcare field, used all the time in my practice. However, it crosses specialties, internal medicine, intensive care units, cardiologists, uh, not orthopedics. I don't think they don't even know what an ABG is. Uh, but a lot of specialties really do utilize their arterial blood gas to help clinically guide them on decision making. So let's go ahead and begin and talk about uh, how arterial blood gases work. So arterial blood gases, I shorthand them into ABGs. So whenever you hear ABG, it just means arterial blood gas, contain five different components to them. Uh, to start off, you're going to have pH regarding the acidity or basicness of the blood. Uh, you're going to have PaCO2. Now the pressure of arterial, whenever you see a small a like this, it means arterial. And then carbon dioxide, so it's a pressure of arterial carbon dioxide. Remember, we're drawing an arterial blood gas. We're not taking a venous blood gas. There are VBGs, venous blood gases out there. We are going to be talking about arterial blood gases. So we are dealing with small a. We are also have PaO2, so pressure of arterial oxygen, as well as uh, bicarb, HCO3. And then lastly, we have base excess, or sometimes this is demonstrated as a base deficit. So if you see a BD, some healthcare systems use base excess, some use base deficit. In my regard, this is one of the least important measures. Uh, it can be used in a very quick and rapid measure to figure out if there's a metabolic acidosis occurring. However, uh, in my standard practice, I don't even consider this because I, I use um, the rest of the values out there. Now, what is a standard pH physiologically? A standard physiologic pH is 7.4. Some places do teach 7.35 all the way to 7.45 as the normal range. Now, I do want to just emphasize um, that is okay. Some individuals, such as somebody who has COPD, for example, might retain carbon dioxide and over the years and smoke more cigarettes and over the years and smoke more cigarettes. And eventually their body goes from a normalized pH of approximately 7.4 all the way down to a new normal of 7.35 or 7.36. That is not normal. That is a uh, pathologic state causing a new uh, standard pH. However, for this scenario, we'll just use 7.4 as our standard pH. What is a standard PaCO2? So P stands for pressure. So if I say 40, it means millimeters of mercury. That is going to be our unit of measure. A standard PaCO2 is 40 millimeters of mercury. Now what is this? Well, we have our blood, and actually let's draw this a little bit different here. We have our bloodstream here. Uh, full of blood, pumping blood throughout our system. It goes from the heart to the body and then back to the heart and back to the body. Now inside this blood is gases. Now these gases are dissolved. We have carbon dioxide gas and we have uh, oxygen gas. Now we also do have some other things less important but we have primarily carbon dioxide and oxygen that we're measuring in arterial blood gas. So this is dissolved gases. Carbon dioxide and oxygen also get transported by other means but we are talking about the dissolved component inside the blood. Now let's take a look at uh, PaO2. A standard PaO2 in my book is 70 to 100. Now that means millimeters mercury again. So we have 70 to 100. Why is there a range? Normally I like to give solid concrete numbers and we can go based on that. However, PaO2 varies directly based on altitude. So if you're high up in a mountain, and I do apologize, I got landscapers outside doing some work. So if you do hear some noises, uh, I do apologize for that one. Uh, we have partial pressure of oxygen dissolved inside the bloodstream and we measure that. And if you're up in the mountains, you're gonna be at elevation. If you're high up on a peak in the mountains, sometimes it's hard to breathe. Sometimes you'll see those climbers on Everest use supplemental oxygen. Why are they using oxygen? Because the partial pressure of oxygen at altitude is less than it would be at sea level. Oh, and there's my dog saying hello to the landscapers. Um, so we have 
somebody who's more at altitude, their normal would be more at 70. If you live at sea level or in a hyperbaric chamber, your PaO2 would be higher. Oh, Lucy wants to be on YouTube here. Um, now it's measured in millimeters of mercury. So 70 to 100 is considered normal. If you see greater than 100 millimeters of mercury on an individual, what that tells me is that they are most likely on supplemental oxygen. They could be at three atmospheres in a hyperbaric chamber, sure. There are some very odd things. Most likely in a clinical scenario, in a hospital, in a clinic, whatever you see, if you draw blood gas and it's 350 millimeters mercury, wow, that's high. It just means that they're on supplemental oxygen. Now there is a basic rule of thumb that you can use to try and figure out uh, approximately what FiO2, FiO2 is fraction of inspirational oxygen. Normally at atmosphere, you and I, just assuming we don't have a nasal cannula or a mask or we're not in a hospital right now, are breathing 21% oxygen. Our atmosphere is made up of 79% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. And you're saying, oh, Dr. Foster, there's other gases. Of course there's other gases. Carbon dioxide, there's helium, there's xenon. I mean, there's a lot of gases in our atmosphere. However, these are all very, 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 very trivial amounts. We have approximately 79% nitrogen and approximately 21% oxygen. Now, a basic rule of thumb for this is if you take the FiO2 times four, that'll give you your approximate PaO2. So instead of equals, I'm gonna do a little approximate sign here because I don't want you to take this as, as, uh, as gospel. It's approximately 84%, not percent, uh, millimeters mercury if you drew a blood gas. So it's somebody who's just on basic oxygen, uh, meaning atmospheric oxygen, no supplemental oxygen, 21% uh, oxygen, their, their PaO2 would be approximately 84 millimeters of mercury. Now, obviously disease states changes. If your lungs aren't working great because they got a whole bunch of fluid in your pulmonary edema and your interstitium doesn't transfer oxygen very well, obviously this is gonna be different. In a normal physiologic state with a healthy individual, this is a great way to approximate. So if I see 350 millimeters mercury in a blood gas, I could divide this by four, um, let me just whip out some quick mental math here. I know you guys can probably do it in your heads. Uh, unfortunately, I can't. Oh, let's see here. 350 divided by 4, that would be 87. So this would show that the patient is breathing approximately 87% FiO2. Maybe they're on a ventilator. Maybe I have my FiO2 controlled. Uh, this is the dissolved portion. It's not your, your saturation. It's your dissolved pressure of oxygen. Okay, now we have bicarb. Bicarb, your standard bicarb in the, in the blood serum is gonna be uh, 24. And then base excess, ideally, you'd have a base excess of zero. Uh, it can range anywhere from negative two to plus two. Realistically, that's about all I'm gonna say. Base excess, refers to your bicarbonate. So we have bicarbonate here at a normal of 24. Let's say you draw blood, an arterial blood gas and it shows a bicarbonate of 28. Your base excess would be plus four. It's because you're, you're four bicarbs over normal. That's all I wanna say about base excess. It's so unimportant. Uh, sometimes people who are good at blood gases can use it as a cheater method. Sometimes people who are bad at blood gases can be using it as a cheater method. However, as a trainee, somebody who's learning blood gases, I don't even wanna focus much on blood uh, of base excess because uh, there's so much m more better stuff to use uh, when interpreting a blood gas. So now we have our example here. We have a pH of 7.4, which is normal. I want you to commit this to memory. I want you to commit this to memory. I want you to commit this to memory, and I want you to commit this to memory. There's four components to a blood gas that I have to have you memorize. Why? Because if you know normal, then you know abnormal. And that's gonna be my next video, is how to then interpret this information and utilize this normal to figure out what abnormal is. So stay tuned, please watch my next video. It's gonna talk about blood gases, the same stuff here, just in 
diseased states, in atypical states, states where we have to figure out what's going on.